do you believe that that is happening, uh, I guess, at the most speed when we're talking about uh, uh, progress taking place, when we're talking about investment opportunities? Uh, where are you most overweight right now? Um, we are very overweight Vietnam. Um, our view is that Vietnam is amongst the ASEAN nations, which has a, um, a substantial uh, public, publicly listed uh, capital market. Uh, Vietnam is the most undervalued, so in general our trade is to overweight Vietnam, which we're about 55-56% exposed now, uh, and significantly underweight those high PE markets like Indonesia or Thailand perhaps. Okay, David, uh, talk to us about the sectors where you're seeing this great uh, growth trajectory and also the deep values. Um, in Vietnam, you can be sector agnostic, actually, but um, in terms of capitalizing on, on gains up front, where we've positioned some of our portfolio as an example in some of the local retail brokers, where going back to the December lows, you could have bought them at 0.2 book. Some of them are up several hundred percent since the December lows. Um, beyond that, I think we mentioned uh, building materials or the cement sector, a specific company last time we talked, and, and that I think is up about 50% from, again, going back just a few months. So um, at these early stages, if you're leveraged to the economy and the economy is moving into a recovery cycle, that leverage will pay you in terms of returns on investment today. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I understand the tenets of your thesis in terms of wanting to buy Vietnam because it's the, it's the cheapest market in Southeast Asia. And, and Thailand was a similar few years ago, Correct. but that was because of political problems and it was trading at a P of about eight at that time. Why do you think investors are discounting uh, the valuations in Vietnam? What are they worried about? And what are you worried about, if anything? Well, everybody's worried about something, and with Vietnam in particular, it's just one of those markets that sort of fell to the side, I think. And, and you know, they had its, a, a massive rally, its first bull rally back in 2007, um, and, uh, you know, it, 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 unlike Indonesia or Thailand, which have had three successive bull and bear markets, you know, since the, the late 80s. So, I think... Vietnam is queued up to, to have another one. But when we, we were there for a week last week visiting companies, uh, only about 20% uh, of the market is covered by brokers. Uh, many of the companies that we visited haven't been visited in 12 months or more. So simply by doing that, number one, they're very happy to see you, but number two, you, you just see firsthand what are some of the ground level opportunities that are available. And it's uh, very David, how thorough does your due diligence essentially have to be? I mean, you know, earlier on in the program we were talking about these issues that some of the China companies uh, are having that are listed in the in Hong Kong or the US. I mean, they're having huge issues. And you know, you use Sino Forest as an example. Um, you know, you look at some of the big investors that lost a lot of money investing into these companies. Just how thorough is your due diligence when it comes to the companies that you're invested in in Vietnam? Um, uh, again, that, that takes some time to answer that question in depth, but I think we, we can summarize by saying uh, any position that we have which is material, we have usually visited the company several times. We've spent a significant amount of time looking at the numbers. I think one of your guests earlier was pointing out that sometimes the companies lie to the accountants, and if the accountants uh, have been fooled, it's, it's clearly possible to fool people. Uh, that's part of the risk uh, reward equation and so if we were looking at Vietnam and saying okay we have a selection of five companies uh, one of those companies over the next two to three years could generate 500 percent two or three of them might generate hundred percent and one of them uh, you know might do nothing uh, or in worst case scenario could be uh, you know could be a bad investment but when you average it out the the opportunity in Vietnam at the moment is uh, just too compelling to, for us to l say we, we can't invest because there, you know, there might possibly be you know, a problem. But we certainly do spend a lot of time trying to identify those problems. We speak with uh, locals on the ground. We try to get uh, the reputational issues uh, addressed up front. Uh, we tend to take the view uh, that, that in certain cases, certain people or certain families, uh, you know, tigers don't change their stripes or however the saying goes. Um, you, you've got to factor it all in. Uh, you can never be 100% sure, but you can at least uh, feel comfort and you can feel more comfort when you're sitting across the table from the, the owner and the management of the company and you can assess uh, the way they act, the way they react to questions, the way they address your concerns at the time. Mm.
Mm, okay. All right, uh, David, a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thank you so much for uh, chatting about these opportunities to us.